Today I'm going to show you how I found a vulnerability in this microcontroller that allows me to extract all of its memory even if it's locked down. Now this has never been published before, so technically that makes this a zero day. This is the whole test setup we're going to use to glitch this processor. We have the oscilloscope. This has our signals on there that we're going to take a look at. We have the Chip Whisper Husky. This is really the brain of the operation. It's going to take a look at the signals. It's going to allow us to insert a glitch. And it has a nice connection over here to this breakout board. The breakout board lets you hook up your oscilloscope probes, inject any signals you want, hook up JTAG programmers, anything you need to your target board. The target boards are conveniently designed like a game cartridge almost. So you can plug in any different target board. This is one I designed with the 4C32. This is a SAM 4S board. It actually comes with the Chip Whisper Husky when you buy this kit. And then we have the smart meter from the last video. This one has the Atmel SAM processor on it, the ARM chip. I've removed it from there and put it onto the test board. This will go in here and is how we'll extract the firmware. This is a blank one that I bought and built a separate board so I could put some test firmware on it first. Once the attack is perfected, then I'll use this chip. Now all of this goes over to the computer here where we're running a Jupyter notebook and we can receive these signal traces from the chip whisper and analyze them, dive in deeper and find a point to glitch. Okay, so let's go over some terms and tools. First, oscilloscope. It's a very simple tool it measures voltage against time. The y-axis is the change in the voltage and the x-axis is the time. It plots it on there. It's good for signal analysis, all kinds of things like that. Then we have glitching or fault injection. All this is, is to induce some kind of abnormality in the chip you're attacking. To take it out of its normal operating conditions, whether it's by tweaking with the voltage, adjusting clocks, sending electromagnetic pulses, anything like that. All that I kind of group under the, the heading glitching. Now a zero day is just shorthand for a vulnerability that's been released in the wild zero days. Basically it's unknown by the general public. Now there's different ways to disclose vulnerabilities. There's full disclosure or responsible slash coordinated disclosure I'll say. Responsible or coordinated disclosure is where you reach out to a manufacturer, you let them know what was going on with the bug, you explain a bunch of stuff, essentially you give them a bunch of free consulting to help them understand what the bug is, then possibly patch it, and then sometime in the future, when you've kind of both agreed on a date, you release it to the public. Full disclosure, on the other hand, is just dropping it to the public. That's what we're doing in this video. Now at its core, this vulnerability is quite simple. So if you see here, we have a few lines. Green is 3.3 volts to the processor. Yellow is the core voltage to the processor, 1.2 volts. And purple is the reset line. So what we're seeing here is I reset the chip and we see the, the current draw from the processor at the voltage at the core. So basically where the processor itself is doing all of its processing functions. And so we can see through these fluctuations, things that are happening. And the idea with voltage fault injection is where do you insert a fault? So where do you drop this voltage kind of drastically in order to cause the chip to do something that it shouldn't do, like allow you to read the memory. Now, this is when I just reset the chip. Let's look at when I power cycle the chip. Okay, so now we see something completely different. We see the 3.3 volt line drop, reset the core voltage. Now we see all of them come up when power is applied to the chip. Everything's going just fine. And then we see this weird thing here. The chip seems to reset itself again. Why would it do that? Let's see what happens here. If we come over here, we can zoom in a little bit in this region. And we see similar fluctuations of the processor here, but we see this weird spike and the chips in reset. So when I saw this, it made me think, well, if the chips in reset, 
why the heck is it doing anything? So I wonder if this is important. Now, when you're getting started, the question is, how do you find a place to attack? Like you can't just attack anywhere. And so what I did with this chip is pull up the data sheet. It's over a thousand pages long. And I scrolled and scrolled and scrolled through it, looking for things that might be interesting ways to attack it. Now this chip has a bootloader. When there's no code on the chip, this bootloader starts up. And once you program it, it's set to no longer start the bootloader and to jump into the code that you've loaded on it. So my initial attack was, how can I insert a glitch right after reset so that instead of jumping to the code, it jumps to the bootloader? That's how I got to this on the oscilloscope and that capture that you saw on the computer. Here's me resetting the chip and here's what the processor is doing after reset. So I tried inserting a glitch all throughout here. Now this window of time, if we look at it on the oscilloscope, we're set at two milliseconds per division. So two, four, six, eight, about nine milliseconds worth of time that I was going to try inserting a glitch. Now you insert it on the nanosecond scale. So there's a lot of places you could insert a glitch in here. And I tried for about two days, just bu -bu 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 -bu, slamming glitches through here and I couldn't get it to start the bootloader. So being stuck, I went to perplexity. I said, I'm working on a voltage glitch attack for the SAM 4C32C microcontroller. I'm also trying to open, a, I'm also open to glitching during an erase cycle to unlock part of it. So I basically said, hey, go do a research project for me. And so it went out and it gave an overview on security and said, here's some key vulnerabilities, insecure power management, debug interface weakness, and then it came down here and it told me that there's a case study on the extraction of it. I was like, holy crap, somebody already did it. Um, and so a 2024 successful firmware extraction. So this is where sometimes AI gets a little silly because this isn't actually the SAM 4C. This is on the E70. Now, anytime you're hacking a chip, it's important to consider other chips in the family. So I'll say the SAM is part of the, the SAM series of chips. That's just a guess, but that's what I'm going with. So I thought, okay, I'll read this paper, this write-up these guys did, 0x01 team, and see what they come up with. So they show the internal structure of the chip. They show setting the security bit. This is in the interface in their own microchip studio. They talk about where they're gonna measure power. They show some reset timing, and then they show something interesting here. They say the blue trace is the trigger on the 3.3 volts, and the red trace is the power of core voltage. And so immediately what struck me is not that there was these spikes here, but that they weren't resetting the chip, they were actually power cycling the chip. And normally, uh, you know, you wouldn't think, I guess there's a lot of difference between that, but it turns out there's a massive difference in these chips between just resetting and power cycling the chip. Okay, so this is our familiar reset. I'm just gonna zoom this back out some so we can see it. Let's power cycle it instead. And now what do we see? Well, we see what we saw before. We see the power cycle, but then we see this weird little thing. We also see this spike over here in the power line. So this spike looks a lot like the spikes they were showing in their document. So I reached out to the guys at 0x01 team and I said, hey, did you ever look at the reset line when you were doing this? Because I looked at this chip, I also looked at the SAM 4S2A. When we plug that in, we'll see the same thing just in a different location. Here, watch this. Look at that. That's freaking wild, right? Now in the case of the 4S2A, its glitch, where you have to glitch it, happens very close to when power is applied. So power comes up and almost immediately this reset line drops low and we have this same glitch, different chip, same family, same SAM family. So then that's when I reached out to the 0x01 team guys and I said, hey, did you ever look at the reset line when you did this, this glitch, when you saw it? And they were like, no, I sent them these pictures. 
and they sent me back this picture. Like, holy crap. Okay, so now there's something going on here, right? Because the hardest part by far of glitching a chip of any of these microcontrollers is where in time do you put the glitch? Once you know where in time, the width of the glitch, the strength of the glitch, that stuff's a walk in the park. This is by far the hardest part. You can search forever and not find this. And this thing literally tells you every single one of these chips in the SAM family I've looked at have told you where to glitch them. Now, for the sake of clarity, it is every SAM chip I've looked at, which is only two. There's a lot of them. Now, it's also the one that uh, was reported to Microchip, the E70. That one has the same issue with the reset line. Now, I scanned through. There's just a ton of data sheets and parts in this family. So I started looking through them, trying to see, is there something that is the same between all of them? Like, how can I figure out? Because I looked at a SAM 9 series chip, and I didn't see, just kind of very quick inspection, the same kind of issue. And so I went looking in microchip data sheets. And what I found was pretty interesting. When you look at the data sheets for the SAM 4C, the 4S, um, the V70, S70, that same series that they found the vulnerability in, you see the mention of a thing called GP NVM bits. These are general purpose, non-volatile memory. Now these bits, there's a few of them, are how you turn on security so you can no longer access the chip over JTAG. Now my theory is that there's obviously some kind of, I don't know what the right word for it is, flaw? I mean, they literally tell you in the chip when you turn it on with the reset line, where should you glitch this part? I mean, that's about as, as crazy as you can get from a, a glitching perspective. Like there is nothing, I've never seen anything like this in my entire life of glitching chips. And so when you look at the different series of chips they have, I started going through every single one, one by one, the ones I saw in this diagram. And so I went down, I would open the data sheet and I would see, do they use GP NVM for security? And so some of the newer ones or some, some different families, for whatever reason, don't use that. And that correlates with this nine series SAM chip that I looked at that I didn't see the same thing. And then the 4C32, the 4S, the 70 series that the vulnerability was disclosed, those all do use GP and VM. So then I looked at all the other ones. And so here's a list of those chips that use that. Now, if you ask me, I would say none of those chips are secure. Like this attack is the easiest attack you will ever do. Like if you get yourself a chip whisper, you can do this attack in a day. I mean, the glitch strength and the location is so loose on this attack. The only thing that matters is that you get it around where that huge voltage spike was that you saw within the reset window. Everything else, the parameters, super easy. There's nothing precise about this attack. So to me, I would say these chips aren't secure from your code being extracted. Not, not even by a long shot. It's incredibly easy at this point to do that. I'm going to run through the glitch once to show you just how easy it is to unlock this 4C32. Now the first thing we have to do is hook up a JTAG adapter to this board. JTAG is how we're going to connect to the chip once we glitch it. I have this one from Atmel that came with a development board that I bought. Then I'm going to prepare the target chip by locking it down. So right now we can read this device signature. So that means the chip isn't locked. So what I do is come to these GP NVM bits. We see these here for boot mode. And then we have this security option. If I click set, it's going to set the security bit inside of the chip so that it can no longer be read. So now when I come to read, it gives me an error. It says it's not detected. And so this is microchip's protection of the chip. You can no longer access it over these connections. Okay, now let's glitch this chip. We see right here the glitch coming, and when it lands on here, this, which is it repeatedly trying to connect to the JTAG port and failing, will succeed, and this will stop. So now all we're doing is watching and waiting for this. Oh, so it hit just right, 
there we are connected. It literally is that fast. If we come over here, we connect to JTAG. We can literally run this command. 1891 SAM4 info. And here's the information about the chip we're connected to. It's completely locked. It's still locked. If we power cycle it, it'll come up locked again. So it hasn't permanently unlocked it. It has just completely bypassed that security GP NVM bit. Now you can look at the registers as the chip runs. So if we get everything set right, we can actually step through the code and look at the registers. We can dump the chip. So you can do the dump image command and we can pull anything we want. We just look at the memory map of the chip. This would be the SRAM and that I have dumped here already. Here's the SRAM of the chip. So as it was running, it just halted it and extracted the memory. And one thing I saw that was interesting in here is in SRAM is this diagnostic mode. So it's quite possible that the pin that sets this chip into diagnostic mode is set right now. And so it entered diagnostic mode and it's just sitting here waiting for us to enter a command. Now, of course, you can also extract the firmware, which is what I did here. And you can see some familiar things in here. Transmitter on for how many seconds. These are all the various strings that are in the firmware. So it literally is just that easy. Within this little window right here, if we slam a glitch and the, the, the width of this, you see how strong it is. The parameters are almost like irrelevant. You just slam something in there. It'll glitch it right past and allows you into JTAG. This is the same on the SAM 4S as well as the 4C, hitting it in this window where that little power fluctuation was. Now I have a few closing thoughts I wanna leave you with. I said in the beginning of the video, technically this was a zero day. That's true, but it's really the same bug that 0x01 team found and disclosed to Microchip previously. Now when you go to Microchip's website and you scroll down and you look at that chip where the vulnerability was disclosed, there's no mention of that at all. There's nothing you can find on that site about that. And I wonder, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think a manufacturer should have to let a customer know that a vulnerability was found in the chip? Or is it up to the customer themselves to go and do the research and figure it out? Basically, does responsible disclosure go both ways? If security researchers are supposed to responsibly disclose to manufacturers and provide free consulting and explain everything that happened and not say anything to the public, what are the manufacturer's responsibilities when that's done? Now, if you enjoyed this video, consider becoming a Richesum Patreon. There's more in-depth content over there and I'm posting new stuff all the time that shows really behind the scenes things and deeper technical stuff that you might be interested in that's a little too long for a YouTube video. Thanks for watching.